Hello, yes, and welcome to a new segment or a new show here, I should even say, on Irish Football Fan TV. It's called The Irish Abroad with myself, Gerard Brown, and Paul Turney. It's going to be a weekly show, well, maybe fortnightly for the next kind of couple of weeks, I suppose, until the new club season gets up and running in England and Scotland. But it will be a regular feature that we'll be looking back on, I suppose, how the Irish players are performing with their respective clubs, mainly players, obviously, that will be gaining recognition on the international stage or certainly will be catching the eye of Stephen Kenny, whatever about... Players catching the eye and something like that. The weather at the moment has been absolutely unbelievable lately, Paul. Um, having one of them, unfortunately, so so far, I've been very, very good with the sunblock. I have I got badly scalded there when we had that good spell of weather at the end of May, and I mm. learned my lesson after that to always make sure you sap on that sunscreen regularly. Yeah, uh, now I've been I've been all right. I'm not much of a sun lover. Now, I, I still go out in it, but I'm not much of a sun lover. But uh, I did have a match on Saturday and I got fairly burnt off that. I think there was no real escape in the sun on Saturday. It was probably the hottest day we've had in a long time. So uh, I don't think the sunblock was doing much good on Saturday anyway, to be honest. Yeah, I had a match last Friday, but uh, it was an e- even still 8 o'clock in the evening. But I was uh, an unused sub standing in the shade of the substitute bench. So I was quite fortunate. Although I was <laughs> away up north and down in, in Carlingford for the last kind of couple of days. And thankfully, I got quite lucky not to get scalded. But it's looking good for the rest of the week anyway. But you look... We won't do an edition of uh, Met Aaron show here. We'll, we'll crack on for what we're meant to be kind of hearing. I suppose so much has kind of happened over the last kind of couple of weeks. It's mad to think even now with the Euro has been over, of that really kind of dominated things for much of June and July. It's not long to go now. Like Obviously, we should also kind of say as well, coming up later on the show, we've got uh, Motherwell, new signing, Daryl O'Connor, just to kind of chat how he's kind of settling in there. And we say that because Scottish season is up and running already. We've seen Celtic were in Champions League action last night. Scottish League Cup is on at the moment as well. The new league season there starts Saturday week. I think it's two weeks this weekend to the mm-hmm. EFL, three weeks to the Premier League. So not kind of long to go. And there's been a lot happening in the background while the Euros are kind of taking place. And I suppose one thing that was quite interesting would have caught a good bit of Irish eyes was the appointment of uh, Nuno as the new Tottenham manager coming from Wolves. And obviously what this could mean for Matt Doherty because we know how he flourished under him in them two or three years of Wolves, getting out of the Championship two brilliant years in the Premier League. You know, it didn't quite happen for Matt last season, but with a familiar face coming in as his boss, it could be just something to really ignite his Spurs career. What do you think yourself, Paul? Yeah, I completely agree. I think Nuno is going to be looking to uh, get Matt Doherty more involved. Obviously, Nuno has his own unique style of play. He plays uh, plays shape. It's usually a three five two with two wingbacks, from what I remember anyway. And uh, Matt Doherty flourished in those positions. He was... He was scoring goals like every second or third week playing and playing under Nuno at a at a at Wolves. So I think there's a big chance he's gonna get a huge opportunity here. And I mean like Serge Aurier, you know, he's a bit of a mixed bag as well. So would he suit playing wing back? You know, I, I think Matt Doherty is a better player anyway, just from looking on the from from the outside and seeing a bit more of him. So I think, yeah, I'm I'm hoping Matt gets more of a chance because last year was a bit tough. Obviously, Jose first. We know what Jose is like. If he doesn't fancy a player, he usually just doesn't play them at all. And then, uh, obviously, when Ryan Mason came in, it was uh, kind of just fix what was broken. So maybe he didn't get yeah. as many opportunities as he wanted. So, um, yeah, hopefully it starts well for Matt under Nuno. Even though I am an Arsenal man, I would like to see the Irish players doing well. Yeah, it was, it was still kind of a weird one, as you mentioned. Like, when, when Jose doesn't take a shine for it, you, you kind of usually get frozen out. But I think just with the nature of the way last season was, maybe with the delayed start... Games came thicker and faster. Spurs had a couple of good cup runs. Europa League, he's still actually seeing quite a good bit of game time. They've got, they're in the Conference League this year. It's, I know they have to go through a playoff round to qualify for it automatically, but you expect them to be in the group stages. Now, the standard of what they come up against mightn't be that fantastic for all we know. Dundalk or Shamrock Rovers could actually be in that competition as well. But you would kind of think like Jose as well, he's very rigid. He, he sticks to his old kind of methods that he would have had even from his Chelsea and Porto days. You'd imagine like Nuno's going to carry through the same kind of style that he had with Wolves, same kind of formation he touched on, not just because he's with a big club that he's going to, I can't see him just going suit and, well, you know, would we'll go with Spurs in the past. That, like, as I mentioned, Aurea, like in the back five, it might be something kind of new to him where he, he knows Doherty can do a job from. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Matt, he, he's, he's, he's probably better going forward than he is defending. And I think when you're playing as just the stationary right back, it's more focused on defending. Whereas in a wing back, you know, it's all about getting up that wing. You are the winger as well as the right back as well. So you have to be fit enough to do it and you have to be able to get up and down the pitch. 
And I think with Matt, he's much more suited to that than Sergio Aurier is. And I think that might suit Spurs overall as well. Like, they've probably got better players than Wolves had overall. They've got Harry Kane up top. Harry Kane is world class on his day. Yeah, for now, look, he's not gone yet. And we're ticking ever closer to the season. So, I mean, you never know. And even if Kane does go, they've still got Son, Lucas Moura. You know, if Deli Ali decides to, you know, do anything on his day, he's fantastic. And Matt would be playing with the likes of them. And I'm sure that formation would suit him. And you'd see him getting a lot more assists and a lot more goals as well. Yeah, I think in general, like you look at Spurs, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. There's just, there's a lot of other issues I think that kind of take place at the moment. I know the Euros is just over. Harry Kane and a couple of the England players involved are probably still, and like even like the Hoiberg as well from Denmark, they're probably mm-hmm. still under summer holidays and they just want to relax and enjoy and take care of that. I still think to Harry Kane, I still don't think on the start of next season he'll be a Spurs player mm-hmm. or start of August, whenever the, the season is. Like and as you mentioned, there's Denny Alley's situation. He's someone who wouldn't be surprised if he looks for a move. You've got Eric Dyer there as well. You know, if, if Kane is to go with Son, possibly kind of bite the bullet, he's getting on in his career. And, you know, he's probably someone I'd say that probably wants to win something at kind of club, club level. Obviously, the interesting one from an Irish point of view is not because of Kane's Irish connections, but is if Kane does leave, which I think he is going to, what does that mm-hmm. potentially kind of mean for Troy Parrott? Like, let's kind of be brutally kind of honest here. I think a loan spell at Millwall in the championship where he got a good bit of game time but didn't score and I think he only got two goals in a spell then at a lower level in the league going against it it's not exactly going to be inspiring that this guy is going to cut his cloth at the Premier League just yet so I think Troy is probably still going to be looking for a loan move but there's no two ways about it his couple of performances to Ireland there and then June friendlies and in particular getting the two goals against Andorra will probably help his stock and, and in terms of maybe a championship club or even if it is a league one club that comes back in from game because Let's not forget, the lad is still only a teenager. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of Irish fans out there do need to be told that as well, because there's a lot of hype around him already. Obviously, he did score the two goals against Andorra. Fantastic for Troy, fantastic for Ireland as well. But uh, I think with Spurs, if Kane did leave, you've got to think of the money that's going to generate for them. Uh, he's not leaving on a freeze, you know. I, I think I'm wrong. No, it'll definitely be for money anyway. So, um yeah, think of the money they'll get in for that. You think of the time when they sold Bale, they brought in tons of other players. I'm sure they'd want to do the same. And um, even though I don't want that to happen, I'd like to see Troy get a couple of games. I think that would be inevitably what would happen if Kane did leave. And uh, But look, the first couple of weeks, if he does leave and they're still looking to get a number of players in, after, uh, if Kane does leave and they're still looking to get players in, when the season's still on, obviously. Oh, no, the transfer window's changed now, isn't it? Sorry, that's yeah, really it's, bad. Yeah, if it's the way it has been the last couple of years, well, I know last year was a bit of an exception, but if it's like the way a no, last normal season was, which was 2019, 2020, it's going to close the Thursday before the season starts. So that means it should be closed, I think, is the 12th of August, I think, give or take. Something yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, well, look, he might get an opportunity in a couple of friendlies anyway, which would be a good thing. It's a new manager. It's a fresh start for everyone. And uh, but I, I agree with you. I think a loan move is probably best. Going to Ipswich last year was a good move. I know he only got a couple of goals, but he did play a few games in a tough division. There's a lot of big clubs in that division, and there is the same again this year. So it's a good division, and there's a lot of Irish lads in that division as well. So I, I think probably another loan move, but he will get a, uh, an opportunity in a couple of friendlies as well. Yeah, I think like if he was to stay with Spurs, I think he will get opportunities this season. Because I'm, I, as I mentioned, mm-hmm. the nature of that UEFA for Conference League, I, I think Spurs will get a very, 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 very soft group in that, provided they get through the playoff round. So I think definitely Nuno will throw him in for a couple of games. But if you're looking at, what, six games every two or three weeks, I don't think that's really enough to carry it through from December to January. And then we'll see with the knockout stage as Burns, is, is it going to be similar to the Champions League, fall down to Europa League, as in third-place teams in Europa League are going to drop down and prove standard? I don't know. We're not going to go into the logistics of that. But... You're only looking at that and maybe the odd occasional League Cup game or maybe like the time when Mourinho brought him on against Spur or against Burnley. I think for his own personal development and from an Ireland point of view, which is I'm more concerned about for Troy, if he goes on loan again, even if it is a League One club, as long as he's playing re- week in, week out and regular. I still think like that loan spell last year, it didn't quite work out for Millwall. Like, there's not too many Irish players that can still turn around and say they got double digits appearances in the championship club when they were still only 18 years of age. So it's going to huge, huge stand for them. So I think people just need to kind of calm down. But it was good to see when we needed someone to step up against Andorra, he showed the kind of, you know, the drive, the, the ball, the character, and got them kind of a couple of goals. Obviously, we're going to have Darrow now, Darrow O'Connor come up with now. 
in a few minutes. But just before that, I suppose we might just maybe look at kind of other kind of transfers. And obviously, we touched on Scottish League Cup as well. Um, ongoing moment, MLS Cup of Irish been involved from there. We might talk about that. Might just maybe briefly look at a couple of transfers too that kind of caught my eye over the last kind of while. Definitely the most significant from a Stephen Kenny kind of point of view is Sack Albazetti's transfer to AIK. Um, not hundred percent sure. The is it was it Gothenburg? Was it Got Gothenburg? It, it's I just. I, ju- I just know them as AIK anyway. I'm, I'm AIK, we'll, we'll, well, yeah. we'll, go, we'll go with that. But he's, he's got a transfer to the Swedish Premier Division, which is quite a good jump, considering he was um, sent on loan to Bolton in League 2 after being previously with League 1, Lincoln City before that. Like, he's a player that I've seen a couple of times Ireland in 21. So particularly, think back to that game last year against Italy last autumn, where Ireland got better. I thought he was one of our bright sparks in that game. He looks a really, really good, exciting prospect. And we've seen... In the most decent, recent past, someone like Josh Cullen has made a bold move to go on the concert and play uh, outside of the British Isles, and that's paid off from. So, fingers crossed, this could be a similar kind of good, kind of outside the box kind of move that could work out for Sack. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's a very talented player. We've seen him with Waterford as well. A couple of I've seen him with Waterford a couple of times as well when he was playing uh, domestically. Um, yeah, I think with Lincoln, it just didn't work out. They obviously had a very good season last year, so it was kind of maybe the same sort of players who were playing all the time. Then with Bolton, he went to a team who were flying towards the end of the season and ended up getting promotion. So there probably wasn't much chopping and changing there either because he did come in in January when they were kind of mid-table, will we, won't we go on towards the playoffs. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good move. It's a new challenge. It's a new country. Uh I'm sure he'll enjoy it, and they're a big club as well, and they have lovely jerseys. So why would you not want to play for them? And they have lovely women in Sweden too, and, and this time <laughs> this time of year as well, lovely climate. The sun barely ever goes down. It'll be a different story now. Come the winter, but I suppose it is a summer league. Actually, you should touch on it. It's similar to ourselves on at the moment, so I don't think Sack will be spending too long of them dark winter months in Sweden as well. Just another transfer as well. A man who loves a good move and is always. No, never staying too long in the one place. Killian Sheridan, he's moved now to Dundee FC. I suppose it's kind of good from his own kind of point of view, seeing kind of closer back to home, and it could be just exactly what Dundee need as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just after getting promoted after beating Kilmarnock in the relegation playoff last right, year yeah. as well. So it's a, so it's a, it's a right back into prem, uh, Scottish Premiership football for him. Obviously, he had time there with Celtic and a couple of other clubs as well. Kilmarnock, so look, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So look... A, fair play to him it's a good move and uh from what i've seen from some of them i've watched a couple of matches in the league cup you know the likes of motherwell darrell connor's coming on uh later as well it's a good standard in that division and a couple of them might be getting into europe this year so he's pitting himself against good standard of players so fair play to him yeah and as jimmy mcgrath showed last year as well if you perform well in that league regardless kind of what the standard is you're going to get recognition for ireland obviously Kidding now well into his 30s, it's over 10 years since his last Ireland cap, so it's hard to really kind of know, is he kind of going to feature much in the radar? Like, you think back to four or five years ago, he was more in his pomp, and he was a top goal scorer in Poland, and even then, we were struggling for a goal scorer in Martin Neal, which didn't kind of quite look at him. Just uh, briefly uh, finish up in the first half of the show there, uh, Paul, you probably, I'll be honest, you've probably seen a bit more football than me over the last kind of couple of weeks. I've probably maybe taken this time off the last couple of weeks with the Euros to kind of wind down and get to see various different parts of Ireland, so I'm kind of enjoying the summer. Just um, mm. what else has kind of stood out for you from what you've seen from the Scottish League Cup and the MLS? Obviously, the two main football at the moment that has Irish players involved. Yeah, well, I, I, I did see Connor Salmon actually got a move. He he went from Falkirk to Alloa Athletic, and uh, he started in their 2-1 win against Livingston there on the weekend, which is a great result there. They're a premiership side, and they had a very good season last year. Obviously, Jay's Cabia is involved with uh, Livingston as well. I, I don't think he's played any upset, part. Yeah. yeah, it is a big upset. And I mean, yeah. it is still a cup competition at the end of the day. It's yeah. it's, the league, it's like the League Cup in England. England. They've just changed yeah. the format of it. Very competitive. Um, Aaron McIniff got 10 minutes last night for Hearts against... Um, I'm not sure. Sorry, I have that on the next play. Against Sterling Albion. Obviously, he came on as a sub. Hearts are very strong side. They were very strong in the first division last year. I think they'll do well in the top tier this year. And, uh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of good players there as well. The likes of Liam Boyce, too, who's still in Northern Ireland International. So, That's you right, know, you've yeah. got to think of that, too. Uh, I think they'll be like a, I think they'll be like a Leeds or last season Premier League. I expect they're going to be very, very kind of comfortable and hold their own. Like, they should never have been in second tier Scottish football in the first place. Whatever was going on in that club behind the scenes, really more so than anything. 
Yeah, and they were just getting a run towards the end of the season before COVID hit. And if you remember, they did just end the season. That's right, yeah. there. So that's probably yeah. what, what killed them. Um, Jamie McGrath, obviously, and uh, there's another player there. Sorry, I don't have the name. Uh, Alan Power both came on for St. Mirren last night against uh, yeah. Stenhouse Moore. They won 3 1. Uh, neither of them assisted or scored a goal. But look, they're getting Adam time. Power be a, a new sign there, joined the Irish contingent at St. Mirren from Kilmarnock. I think so. I'm not sure. I didn't actually, yeah. I didn't actually get that. I just, I just kind of got them from like. Yeah, I don't know. I just remember him being like the mark. Like, it's obviously part of that famous FA Cup run that Lincoln had when they were non league against mm. the FA Cup quarter man. He's with Kilmarnock last couple of I'm fairly well certain he's a, a new sign to add to a very, very strong Irish contingent there at St. Mary. I think it's fair to say they've become everyone's second team from Scotland and in, in, from an <laughs> Irish point of view uh, with the, the strong Irish bond there. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully it keeps going for them. I think. Did they they got to the final of the League Cup last year or was it the semi final? I think they got to the semi final of both competitions last year. Yeah, yeah, they did. Like they were unlucky. Like that's good going yeah. for a club who you who you would consider quite small in comparison Very to small, the likes yeah. of, like even the likes of Aberdeen, Hibbs, Hearts, even Kilmarnock who got relegated, I'd probably relegated, consider yeah. they were in they were in Europe a couple of years ago. So you've got to look at it that way. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go on. I've actually got a bit, bit from the MLS. Uh, Derek Williams played full 90 minutes, uh, in a 2 1 defeat to Vancouver Whitecaps for LA Galaxy. He also got a yellow card. Obviously, you don't need full details. Uh, good to see. Uh, he's getting, getting a bit of time. And, uh, Jake Mulraney last week, he set up a goal and got a red card for Atlanta United in, uh, I think the, I'm not sure what score they were. Uh, they drew two all with Nashville. So look, he did get the red card rescinded in the end, but he didn't play this weekend. So that's, look, it's involvement, and that's the main thing. Irish players are playing, and we've got to keep thinking there's more outside the English league. That's what we've got to keep thinking. Yeah, just before we kind of finish up in this uh, segment there, Jake is one that I think is very, very interesting. I've seen him before with the Ireland 21s, particularly I know it was a chasing experience. They got hammered 6 0 in Tallis Dane by Germany, but he was probably our most impressive player on the night, and he was a very, very much a regular for Inverness, and then went up to Hearts and done very, very well. He was probably one of their standout players and they got beaten that 2019 Cup final by by Celtic. And he's gone, as you said, like he's gone over to the MLS and he's making kind of a bit of an impact. He's still only young. He's only 24, 25. I, I was kind of a little bit surprised that even his time at Hearts that he didn't kind of, after their good runs to the Cup final that time in 2019, I know maybe Mick was only there for a short term and it was just about getting the Euros and there wasn't maybe the opportunity for summer friendlies like Stephen Kenny kind of had and wasn't much opportunity to experiment, but he's someone I think kind of think now that we maybe kind of like bring him in. Obviously, again, maybe Stephen Kenny's time for experiment is kind of gone, but the summer international is just kind of gone. Where I know maybe realistically speaking, Qatar is gone, but these are competitive games. But he is someone that I'm surprised that um, hasn't maybe got that kind of jump up senior level. And I still think could be someone worth keeping an eye out for. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the MLS, okay, maybe it's not the best of standards, but it's grown and it's always grown every year. It seems to be grown. It's a you know, it's improving. So, look, why not? I think if a player is playing regularly and they're informed, there's no reason why they shouldn't be involved. We can't keep going back to, say, players who are on the bench all the time, not getting any game time, but still relying yeah. on them. I know a lot of international football does work like that, but you need players who are fit and in form. And for me, I think if you're in form in any division, you should give them an opportunity. But I say there like might be much room for experiment and come to the September games. At the end of the day, you know he's going to be coming into that completely fresh in the peak of his season, where most lads only coming in after you know three or four games. So he could be someone who could be perfect to kind of bring into the squad. And like I said, there's three games in seven days in September, so you're going to need your squad. So maybe he could be someone just to keep an eye out for um, for the squad come the September internationals. Obviously, that squad won't be named for at least another month or so anyway. But I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for part one of the show, and we're going to. To kick on now with, with part two of the show where we're going to have Motherwell's Daryl Connor join us. So we're now delighted to be joined on the show by Motherwell's new signing, Wexford's finest, Daryl O'Connor. Daryl, how are things? I suppose you're up and running with the new season already. The Scottish League Cup kickstarted the last kind of couple of weeks. It's kind of a good preparation, I suppose, before the league campaign. How are things going in that? You've two wins from two and obviously you have your third game tonight to try and wrap up qualifications to the knockout stages. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been good since I've come up here. Uh, I came up I think it was like nearly four weeks gone now at this stage and uh, it's been good. Uh had a few pre season games, um and it was just 
like it's a bit different than the English preseason that there's cup competitions early on. Uh, but it's decent because like it's a, you're not playing meaningless friendlies. Like we're using these cup games as preseason, but you're still fighting for three points. Um, so like you're looking ahead to each game and you want to win them. There's a preseason friendly game. Makes no difference if you win or lose, but these are cup competition games. Like, so you, you kind of want to to win them all. So, no, so it's been going well so far. Yeah, and it's even kind of important as well to kind of, I suppose, build up momentum and confidence before the start of the season. Because I suppose by Mother was own standards last season, eighth place wasn't exactly a finish they would have been happy with. So if they can kind of get, you know, even the three or four wins from this and kick that into the new league campaign because I was looking at the fixtures there the, the opening games are quite favourable for Motherwell I don't think they have Rangers until the middle of September and Celtic sometime in October yeah well we haven't really looked at the at the league table to be honest we've we've literally just concentrated on each game as it comes uh, especially so far of pre-season we had a game last Wednesday had a game on Saturday and then we have, we have another game tonight another game on Saturday then and then the league campaign kicks off Saturday week so we're just taking every game as it comes we're not really worrying about the league so far we're, we're worrying about the cup and then obviously after Saturday then we'll our full focus will be on the opener uh, at home on Sky Sports so, so that'll be the that'll be the real test and see where we actually are at the start of the season yeah be good exposure for the opening game of the season and Sky Sports didn't actually know that myself Paul, anything uh, jumping out on your mind that you'd want to ask Daryl yourself? Uh, I was just going to ask about when you were playing for Leicester, when you played in the Football League trophy, the under tw- like obviously with the under-21s. Do you think that kind of helped you out because you were playing against, you know, senior pros there, you know, against the likes of, say, Portsmouth, Dacring and Stanley, stuff like that? Yeah, 100% it did. Um, a lot of people don't realise, like, Premier League 2 is... It's a lot of ticky tacky football, as in like you like you don't really have much headers or much battles with with strikers or anything like that because they're mostly quick, short, and sharp. They they like to run in behind. Whereas with the checker trade games, like we were playing the likes of Newport, Tranmere, and stuff like that, where you know that you're going to be in for a battle. You're going to have to defend for the ninety minutes. You can't relax like you could in Premier League two if you were on top. Um, it was just proper men's football. Uh, I've been used to it since I was sixteen. Playing like with with the local side at home, uh, so I was, I'm I'm well used to it. But not I'm really enjoying the physical side of it now. That's one of my main strengths is being physical. So it's 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 really it's really important. Them games for the last two years I've been playing in that. I've done well in them to, to show the managers now that I actually am able for men's football, for senior football. Just yeah, um, yeah. from your time in Premier League too, would you have come up across Alfie Lewis much uh, playing against West Ham? They weren't in our league two seasons ago and then last season then we he played injured him once. Yeah, he was injured and then... Yeah. I got injured then as well, so I only played West Ham once, and I, I don't think he was playing, so I, I, I never came across him. Uh, like I was injured for basically the second half of the season, so I missed a good chunk of games playing against a lot, a lot of teams. No, it's just because obviously bias since I've been a Pats fan, I've got down and seen him quite a lot. I and mean, you mentioned Premier League two being ticky tacky a lot. I can see that a lot in his play. He's a very, very good kind of comfortable player. I think he's been playing that level for a long time, so he looks like someone who could go on to do really well for himself. Just once, a couple of things I actually found quite interesting, I was just kind of reading up an article, I think you've done with um, Pundit Arena, I think it was just after you signed for Leicester in 2019, that like, before you actually made your debut for Wexford in March of that year, you know, you mm. were actually contemplating giving up, and or not maybe giving up, sorry, but more so kind of leaving Wexford because the opportunities weren't kind of quite helping, happening for you. Two years as well, you know, as an electrician and stuff like that, so it hasn't all been glitz and glamour that's seen it rise to like a former Premier League champion and now playing Scottish League or Scottish Premiership football. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, like when I go home, they're like, oh, you had an easy ride and, like getting over to England and stuff like that. And like what people don't understand is like I never had trials when I was 14, 15, 16, never had them 
whereas a few of the boys I know went over to numerous clubs in England and, and everything like that. Um, even going back as far as the Kennedy Cup, I was on the team for two years as a striker. I was playing centre-back with, with my club and I said it to the manager at the time, it was like, I want to go back play centre-back. And I think it was the March of the Kennedy Cup year and he just was like, that we're, we're not bringing to the Kennedy Cup. And I was just like, that's fine. Obviously, it was tough to take at 12, I think it was 12 at the time. And then, like it, it was just a. It's been a roller coaster ever since then. I've been on the county team, dropped, got dropped again, got back on the county team, played for the under eighteen county team, uh, a year above me age, and then went to Waterford, played a year in Waterford. Then, I left Waterford because obviously with electrician. I was walking in Dublin, so I couldn't commit to travelling up and down to uh, to Dublin uh, to to Waterford two two three times a week. Then we went. I went and signed with Rovers. Uh, the week before we were meant to play Wexford in in the start of the league, I got knocked out uh, from from the keeper and uh, the concussion protocol like I failed, so I was out for two months with that. Only played a handful of games at, at Rovers. Then moved back down to Wexford with I had to do college for for the electrician for phase two. Then went and played with Wexford. Uh, as as you just said there, I was contemplating contemplating leaving Wexford. Uh, I I wasn't even in the squad. The first game for Athlone. Uh, second game I was on the bench down in Ferry Carrick Park. Didn't come on. And then I think it was the third game. Uh, Sean Callan got injured, uh, and I presumed I was starting because I was the only centre back on the bench. And then he, then Brian O'Sullivan switched the team around, and I was still on the bench. And I think we were four nil down at half time or something. And he brought me on. Then it was just like, look, it's like you can't really do much more on than the boys I've been on the pitch. Uh, just try and play a game. Like, and I think it was within five minutes. I was after assist and. Jack Doherty for a penalty or something like that. And since then, it was I was in and out of the team. I was in the team, and then the captain of Exeter came back, and I got dropped again. And then I I got back into the team again, played across all the back four, and then I just somehow then managed to get the move to Leicester. Uh, two months later, the clearance came in international clearance came in so i was only training for two months couldn't play any games only playing friendlies then we, like i i got into the i got into the team then i got knocked out then against newport uh came back from that played one game and then COVID hit. and then we were off football for six seven months and then obviously then we came back after COVID. I was I played up until Christmas, and then I tore my hip flexor, and then came back from that. Then and then I tore my quad. So it it's been a hell of a roller coaster ride. Yeah. And now now I'm up here in Motherwell. So hopefully I'm, I'm looking for a clean slate, injury free slate. So yeah, hopefully good days ahead and. Just listen, Sergio. You've had nearly more uh, concussion protocols more than most rugby internationals for the sound <laughs> with your collisions. Typical life yeah. for a centre back, I suppose. One position I've actually never played at any level of football, so I wouldn't know <laughs> much about it, whether you would or not. Now, Paul. Now I'm five seven. I stay away from that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I know you've you've done a good bit of uh, prep for this and research as well, Paul. So anything else you want to get in there to ask Dara? Uh, just, just like it's been a quick transition for you. You know, you've gone from Wexford to Leicester, and then Leicester up to Scotland now. Uh, has it been? Has it been tough on you? Obviously, you said before we started, you're a bit of a home bird. So, was it tough, or are you getting on fine? Uh, at the start, it was tough. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have good friends and family around me. Um, so when I moved over to Leicester, mum. I moved over with me because my whole family was was here. My brother and my dad was down in London. So mum moved to Leicester with me and she helped me settle in and, and everything like that. So even after a hard day of training or whatnot, I was still being able to go home, 
to mommy's food and stuff. So it was, <laughs> it was, it was grand. It was difficult transition enough. Um, but at the minute now, I'm in, I'm in the hotel here, uh, look, waiting to get an apartment. Um, and it's it's been grand so far because I know for a fact like I'm I'm okay now and mature enough to to go out on my own. Um, and a few of the boys are staying in the hotel with me, so we're we're going doing stuff. We're, we're grabbing a Nando's or grabbing a coffee after training and stuff. So it's it's grand at the minute. Mm, that's good. Yeah, just um, one last thing as well. I just want to touch on it before I let you go because between taking this just before that, you've actually been with us nearly for about forty minutes now at this stage. But you were also kind of saying to us when we had that good chat, um, good thing some of that's just staying off here, but uh, beforehand as well, that you, you quite, you'd know Greg Bulger quite well from your time, obviously, with Wexford, with the family and that. Would Greg be someone you'd still kind of keep in good kind of contact with, even as he's obviously playing away now with Saigo and you're obviously over in Scotland? I'd always be uh, be looking at, at the results of Sligo and stuff. Uh, so, no, I do, I, I know his family kind of well, so I'd, I'd always keep in contact and, like all the boys I, I, I played with back home, I'd always be keeping an eye on the teams and, and all the results, making sure that they're they're doing okay and stuff. Yeah, it's good to see the flying the flag for Wexford between yourselves and Greg Bulger, and obviously, of course, with n- numerous players as well from Wexford, obviously, with the current side in the first division as well, keeping uh, football strong and that county down in the southeast. Dara, thanks very much uh, for your time, Stephen. Best of luck, obviously, with your game this evening and with the season ahead with Motherwell, and hopefully, you'll be have. Plenty to celebrate come May when it's all said and done for the 2021-2022 season. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me on, lads. Thanks, Dara. Right. And that, of course, was Dara O'Connor, their new signing for Motherwell. Just chatting about how, of course, he's settling in with the new club in the Scottish Premiership. It is a feature we will like to do here on the Irish Abroad show over the course of the next couple of weeks. Or any other ideas or maybe any other players that you would like us to get, do be, don't be shy to let us know and we'll try and get that sorted over the course of next couple of weeks and as we say like this is a show that especially now when the domestic football in england and scotland kicks off next couple of weeks it will be much more regular occurrence in the show but that's where we're going to call it a wrap for for day one paul and we'll get out and enjoy more of that well first and foremost put on the sun block and then go out and enjoy that sun yeah definitely definitely jerry definitely super stuff paul thanks jerry